Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about phones. As I've been going through the first couple months of really using open source software day to day, I'm noticing some things and growing and learning and reading. Yesterday, I did a review on Debian, read through their website, really started to connect with some of the ideals, specifically with uh, free and open source software. And I'm still using plenty of proprietary things, some of them because I need to for work, some of them because it's the best software available for what I'm using at the time. I'm not saying that those software pieces that are open source equivalents can't get there. I'm recording on OBS right now, and uh, I can't think of something better. And it is an amazing piece of open source software. But what I'm realizing is, is I'm, I'm learning and I'm growing in the open source community that we have a serious flaw in our protection of our privacy, in uh, protection of our freedoms. What is holding us back? Well, most of the time we come and we sit down at the desk and we turn on our desktop or our laptop and use our open source software for our daily needs. And then we get a phone call or we get a text, or we're not by our desktop or our laptop, and we're out and about with friends and family, and you got a phone. This is an iPhone 13 Pro. It's a great phone. The hardware is amazing. The phone uh, camera is incredible. UI is the best that I've experienced. I, and in that sense, I love using my iPhone. Look, I know I said iPhone and you're thinking iOS and then Apple and then whatever else that might go through your mind. But for me and my experience right now, my iPhone is a killer experience. So, you know, some of you use Android uh, phones and Android's great in and of itself. And I know that it has some underlyings of Linux kernel and some Linux, you know, they're, they're relatives. Although they use some open source code, that's a locked down operating system on that phone with telemetry and all of those things that you may not want on your device. Now, in one sense, the way I live my life, I don't care. Like, I, I don't. But in ideals and philosophy, I do. I... I I believe I should be able to walk around and Google not know where I am, but Google does. And I fight with this with the proprietary software and open source because there were two moments in the past month where I used Google software and it, I wouldn't say it saved me. This wasn't necessarily a life or death situation, but I was in some very uncomfortable positions and if I didn't have those two pieces of Google software on my iPhone, I don't know if we would have been as successful on our trip. And here's what I mean. I went to Mexico with my wife about, I don't know, three, three four weeks ago. And we get there and we know very little Spanish, if at all. We know very little. Google Translate was outstanding. I could sit there and speak into the phone and then it could turn around and say it in Spanish to the person that I'm trying to communicate with, which by the way, everyone I dealt with in Mexico uh, were so patient and kind and know I wasn't sitting in a resort somewhere where they were trying to, I don't know, make sure they get a tip. That's not where I was dealing with. We, we rented a car, got some Airbnbs. We did go up and down the coast, but these were people that were just very kind and generous. And so they were patient with me trying to communicate with them. That was great. But if I didn't have Google Translate, uh, something as small as me ordering some food and something a little more real was I'm trying to talk with, I'm trying to get to our, our Airbnb and there's a, a, it's a gated community and there's a guard there and he doesn't speak a lick of English. I don't speak a lick of Spanish. And we were able to communicate with each other. That was great. The other piece of it is, is Google Maps has an offline mode. And that being offline and the fact that I could download the map and use it and have access to it to get around Mexico 
was really helpful. I didn't always have great cell service, and I was able to do that. Now, this is where proprietary software is, you almost feel like it. I wouldn't say it's a necessary evil. I, I don't, but I don't know of an open source project that even comes close to being able to do that as well and as seamlessly as those two pieces of software that Google provided. Now, what did I give up to be able to do that? I'm sending out some sort of GPS signal and I'm sure there's ways that they knew exactly where I was. And in one sense, again, I really don't mind, but in another sense, in a philosophical sense, I can see that being a problem. So where do we get to with this? I can be as open source as I can with my desktop and my operating system and the software pieces that I use, but not on my phone. Most of you are probably using an Android phone or an iPhone, and some of you still may be holding on to a BlackBerry if they still make Blackberries, or a Windows phone, but all of those proprietary, all of those are closed. That's all you got. So it's almost like you choose to buy into this ideal of open source software, and it's almost like you shoot yourself in the foot every time you, you answer a phone call or use your phone. I know that there are some projects happening trying to make this happen. Uh, I know that this is a work in progress. And something to be of note is that the first go I had with Linux 15 years ago, I really didn't feel like at the time it was going to work for me daily. I really thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. I liked where the project was going. I ended up moving on to Mac because I didn't have time to fiddle around, to get under the hood, to, you know, I remember wireless drivers being a thing and uh, they weren't set up as open source code yet. And so we had to, to get the proprietary driver and get some sort of wrapper and cross your fingers and hope that it worked. You know, with my phone, I don't even necessarily have a choice yet. So I've done some digging. I'm sure some of you who are interested in Linux and interested in uh, FreeBSD, um, all of these open source operating systems, and in turn, uh, free and open source software, you've been looking for a way, at least I hope you are, to be able to use your phone with an open source and privacy driven operating system. I'm gonna flip over here and I don't think there's anything new. If you've searched for you know, a Linux phone or a free and open source phone or a free and open source mobile operating system, these things are gonna pop up. But I did wanna quickly walk through where we're at with this, because as soon as it becomes something that's mainstream, soon as, you know, like with OBS, if you were gonna live stream or record, OBS is the go-to program, whether or not you're on a, a, a closed operating system like Windows or not. It's great. It is awesome. I can't wait for the day for true open source devices and true open source hardware to be able to be worked with. And here is the first example. Um, this is the PinePhone Pro. You probably already went, yeah, I know about the PinePhone Pro. But I like that there's people trying to do something and giving you something. And this isn't super expensive to, to put some of this on and help uh, the developers put it on a phone and try it out. Maybe I'll get the opportunity to do that at some point soon. I don't know. Right now, I can't do that right now. Um, uh, I like this point here. Who isn't the Pine Phone Pro for? It says, we're not in the business of selling empty promises. A much faster mainline Linux smartphone won't make the existing operating systems more refined, nor will it magically spawn software replacements for your iOS or Android applications. There is a long road ahead of us all of us, and it will require some time and effort for the software to reach a degree of maturity that would satisfy mainstream users. It's true. Um, you have this one. You have the Librem 5 phone here, a security and privacy focused phone. Okay, cool. It uses Pure OS, a fully free ethical and open source operating system that's not based on Android or iOS. Okay, cool. You know, I'm like, Maybe I'd want to use that. What's going on here? It's a $1,300 phone, and I know my iPhone is a $1,300 phone. 
So it better match up spec-wise with that iPhone because the iPhone, when it comes to software working with the hardware, ain't nobody does it better than Mac and Apple. You know, I see some of this, I'm like, okay, is this going to compete? Maybe. Am I willing to move to this? Am I going to be able to use it with um, my provider? And, you know, there we are again with providers. Um, you have this Vola phone. It says it's a Google-free Android for your privacy. Then you've got your operating systems that are being ported and trying to be ready and available for mobile phones. Some of these projects look promising, but they're not ready yet. You have Ubuntu Touch, which is being supported now by the community, trying to get this ready to go. I have seen some demos with it being used, and it looks promising. It really does, Ubuntu Touch. Then you also have Sailfish OS, and this is, it says here, a European alternative to dominating mobile operating system. It's the only mobile OS offering an exclusive licensing model for local implementations. Okay. You know, even this doesn't get me ex super excited. <laughs> you know, Mobian, which is Debian for mobile. Now, I know those people really care about free and open source. So I'm interested in this. And I know like Mobian uh, and Ubuntu Touch, you can install on a PinePhone Pro, but I don't think it's ready yet, guys. At least not from my experience, just from what I've been reading and watching. I don't have first-hand experience, but I'm not going to spend money on a Pine phone if I don't think it's something that I could use daily yet. I'm not in the place, and I'm not a programmer uh, to be able to help. Now, I might be able to help beta test and report bugs. So if it gets to a place of beta where they want someone to help report some of these things and get this going, I'm your man. I'll be glad to take the time to report those bugs and help them get to where they need to be. They need people to do that. Um, but Mobian is definitely in that line. I hope this project gets going. And uh, there also is uh, Plasma Mobile, which is KDE's uh, version here. And you've got Manjaro um, doing an ARM version. And you have this post-market OS and an Arch Linux ARM has been ported to the Pine Phone and Pine Tab by the uh, DANCTNIX community. Forgive me, guys, uh, for not knowing how to pronounce that. Just forgive me. Um, there's an OpenSUSE one, a Fedora one. You know, hey, there's people working on this. There's also this Pure OS. This website is pretty slick looking. Um, Pure OS, a fully convergent, user-friendly, secure, and freedom-respecting OS for your daily usage of Pure OS. You're the only one to control your digital life. Now, what is attract attractive to me is that this looks like it's on a, you know, of course, I know this is marketing, guys. <laughs> I get what marketing does. But it does show a dream and something that I appreciated being in the Mac world, being in the Apple world, that my phone was able to easily be able to connect and communicate with my iPad and my uh, laptop and my iMac Pro. All of them talked together. And if I took a picture on my phone or took a video on my phone, I could sit down in my iMac and I could open up Final Cut and I could edit that video and then I could put it back out and I could see it on my iPad and show it and put it up on my Apple TV. You could tell I was really in the ecosystem there for a while. I've seen the lights, don't worry. But something like this where I see it installed on a laptop and I see it installed on a phone is attractive to me. I'm like, man, that's what I'm talking about. That's something I can still glean from some of the positive things that proprietary, soft, proprietary software has, like the Google apps that I mentioned. I don't know how well we would have done on our own in Mexico without them. And I, I'm grateful for those. This looks like, th you know, this is something that they are really trying to do. They call it real convergence here. Real convergence means bringing your desktop computer with you wherever you go. When we talk about how we have invested in convergence with Pure OS, we started with a desktop OS and shrunk it down to your pocket. Cool. <laughs> 
when I hear Pocket, I think of uh, I think of Lord of the Rings, and there's a line that Gandalf says, and it's like, "It's in your pocket." This is something that uh, is definitely getting me excited. That I see that other people feel the same way that I do. Maybe I will do a review of Pure OS on a virtual machine. See if I even like it there. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe this is turning into something. I don't know about you, but I feel like I, I keep, as I'm learning and understanding open source software and the movement of free and open source software, that I feel like I'm shooting myself in the foot with a phone. I'm not saying that the iPhone isn't great because I think it is great. I'm not saying your Android device isn't great because it probably is. But when you start to buy into some of these ideals, you realize that, that that's not gonna work. There's a couple other pieces that I'm still using that are proprietary. I'm still using uh, DaVinci Resolve to edit my videos. Um, and I'm gonna do some more testing with Caden Live and OpenShot and Shotcut and you know all of those and see if they can come close. Uh, my initial experience is they can't yet. Very nice if you're doing some simple editing. Remember I came from Final Cut Pro now I'm using DaVinci Resolve. There's some things that I really like for my workflow to make things happen. The other piece is Google. My family uses Google Chrome. Uh, there's some shared pieces. And so I have Google Chrome installed on my open source software. And it's almost like I've shot myself in the foot with the Google Chrome. I've shot myself in the foot with the Apple iOS device. I would love to be able to move on. And I'm sure slowly and surely I will get there. But I wanted to share with you because I don't think I'm the only one dealing with the phone thing and hoping for something with the phone thing. This is getting close and exciting, but I don't know if it's there yet. If anyone has stuff they want me to test, I will be glad to take a look at it. If I mean, I don't have a Pine phone yet, but maybe I will. I don't know. But let's work together. Let's figure this out. That's kind of like the open source you know, that's what you do. Obviously, I'm not a programmer. You know, it takes people like me and people like you and the brilliant minds who are investing in this code to all come together to give a good, cohesive experience. Linux for me, free open source software for me is eye-opening and I really do like it. I want it in my phone. I want it in my phone. Get in my phone. <laughs> anyways, anyways, thanks for hearing me. Uh, talk about this today. See you next time.